Hello everyone and welcome to the Virginia Association for Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping items before we do get started. There is a Q&A button feature located at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to answer, ask questions at any time during the session. And if you do have a question for a specific college, be sure to mention that college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you and this presentation is being recorded. It will also be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to our first institution, which is Lynn University. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and get my screen shared here so everybody can see the presentation and we'll get started. Um, while well, the presentation's loading up, my name is Omar. I am with the Office of Admission here at Lynn University. And I'd like to welcome you to the south of Florida, where the weather is always 80 degrees, sunny, right near the beach, just can't complain about being down here. So let's talk about location first. As I mentioned, we're right next to the beach. You can see from the photo, we're literally four miles away from the beach. Uh, Lynn prides itself on being a small university, so we're about 3,200 students. But within the city of Boca, there's two other universities, which gives us a combined of around 40,000 students. So you get the atmosphere of a bigger university while having the classroom of smaller university where you have that interaction with faculty one-on-one -on -one where they get to know your name, they get to know your ambitions and your hobbies and ensure that you can be the best version of yourself while you're studying here at Lynn. Now, when you talk about Lynn, you're always gonna hear this in mind of how diverse we are. We are, pretty much the most diverse university in the South of the United States. We have students from nearly a hundred different nations and almost all 50 states and territories, which is quite fantastic considering the times that we are in right now, specifically when it comes to COVID. Study abroad is halted. You can't travel abroad as much as you could have been. So being able to walk on campus, seeing students speak multiple various languages, seeing different cultures within the classrooms, seeing different clothing style, all of this contributes to your education. Now, when the time does resume and we're able to do study abroad, we have study abroad in all six major continents. So you can fulfill your heart's desire, whether you wanna be in Japan, Italy, Argentina, Canada, or anywhere else, we'll probably have a program set up for you. And you can start your study abroad as early as your freshman year. All you have to do is complete one semester here at Lynn on ground, then starting moving your second semester, you can travel abroad. Now, when we talk about Lynn, you have to mention majors, but then there's one specific thing in regards to our major, and that is our accelerated bachelor's degree. Keep in mind at Lynn, most of our programs are available so you can complete them in three short years. That saves you about $50,000 and it gives you a head start on programs such as the MBA, if you wanna go into law or even med school saving you that year is gonna to contribute to your success in the future. But then when you look at majors specifically, Lynn is very well known for the College of Business. So that includes cybersecurity, data analytics, international business and sports management, and other majors such as our bio pre-med track, uh, criminal justice. And we do have a few key majors within communication and design such as animation and game design as well. Now, we've talked a little bit about academics and I really wanna show you what campus is like. And you can't talk about campus without mentioning the Christine E. Lynn University Center. This is the hub of campus where all of our students are there pretty much around the clock. This is where you're gonna have your cafeteria, you're gonna have student affairs, student organizations, collaborative learning spaces, social impact lab, and much more. Keep in mind that this building is bigger than the White House. So it is quite a massive building and that's why our students have enjoyed it. It's almost brand new, it's less than two years old. But then when we talk about the university center, I mentioned the cafeteria. And you can't talk about college without showing food. If you're a big foodie such as myself, you're really gonna enjoy the fact that we have everything under the sun. This is just a small example of what we serve for our students every day. So whether you are a vegan or a vegetarian, you want your dietary restrictions such as kosher and halal, everything is available for you at Lynn. Now, outside of the university center, there are plenty of events that you can attend, whether that is our BFA of drama productions or our conservatory of music, or you just wanna catch up on a little bit of sports or even our own student tailored fashion show. 
There's plenty of events. You're looking at somewhere between five to seven events per day on campus. And then there's plenty of events off of campus as well. And if you love sports, you're gonna be happy to know that we are NCAA in 19 different sports. So whether you wanna be on a team or you just wanna play on intramurals, there's definitely no shortage of sports at Lynn. Now, last but not least, we wanna talk about your future. After you graduate from Lynn, where are you gonna be going? Keep in mind that we are in the Miami metro area. We're literally an hour north of Miami, 45 minutes north of Fort Lauderdale and less than 20 minutes south of West Palm Beach. And this is one of the fastest growing areas in the United States. I know maybe you're not really picturing the whole picture, so I want to help you with that. Keep in mind these companies that you see in front of you are within an hour drive of Lynn. And most of these companies listed here, we've had students that are currently working or have interned or even have done co-ops there. So quite a bit to do. So whether you wanna be working for a Fortune 500 company or small medium enterprises, or you wanna become your own entrepreneur, there's plenty of options down here in South Florida. If all of this sounds good to you and you would like to apply, keep in mind that for our juniors, the application opens up every year, August the 1st. Once I get everything that is listed here, I'm gonna be giving you your decision in under three weeks. So it's a pretty fast turnaround. I don't wanna stress you out. It shouldn't be a stressful process. If you do have any questions, go ahead and take a screenshot of that. That way you can keep my contact information and you can always find us on social media. Thank you so much. Thank you for that presentation. Up next, we have Massachusetts Maritime Academy. All right, give me one second to just. Share my screen. All right, so my name is Callie O'Brien and I am one of the assistant directors over in the admissions office at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Um, the photo that you'll see right now is our entire campus. We are very small, about 1,600 students, um, 1,700 students on campus. Some quick facts about us. Um, for anybody that's familiar with Massachusetts, um, we're about an hour south of Boston. Uh, we're located right on the Cape Cod Canal, so our campus is its own peninsula, um, and we're about an hour from Providence, Rhode Island as well. As I'd mentioned, we have 1,700 undergraduate students. We are part of the public university system in Massachusetts, and we are a state maritime academy. So there are six state maritime academies. Um, one of the biggest misconceptions is that people think we are military and we are not, um, but we are a regimented school, which I'll get to in a minute. We offer a STEM-based education with a regimented campus life. You are guaranteed and actually required to live on campus for all four years, um, which comes along with sort of that regimental um, piece that we have. And for tuition fees, room and board, which includes your sea bag, which is all of your uniforms for out-of-state students, the cost of attendance is about $42,000. We are very limited in what we offer. Um, so I'm just gonna list them really quick. Um, we have seven different undergraduate programs. All of them are Bachelor of Science degrees. Marine engineering and marine transportation are the two that get us our classification as a maritime academy. So students in those programs are looking for seagoing career. Uh, we also offer facilities engineering and energy systems engineering, emergency management, which has been one of the most popular programs in the last several years, international maritime business, and marine science safety and environmental protection. We operate on a learn, do, learn philosophy. All of our programs require experiential learning, uh, depending on what major you're in, will determine what type of experiential learning you're doing. So students in those licensed track programs, marine engineering and marine transportation will actually go out on our 540 foot training ship. And the students within the other majors will get hands-on experience within their fields. We have a mix of internships and study abroad programs that are available. Um, and then no matter what program you go into, you really can pursue careers either on land or at sea. The regiment, so this is a piece that really makes us different. Our students do wear a uniform throughout their four years. Um, the uniform that you see on the top is referred to as your classroom blacks. So that's really your everyday uniform. Um, and the uniform in the lower photo is for more formal events on campus. More than anything, the uniform and the regiment is designed to build character and leadership skills. 
It enhances academic programming and contributes to career success. So you'll learn a lot of attention to detail, which is a really important lesson when you're hitting the workforce. It acts more than anything as a leadership laboratory or simulator. Um, as I mentioned, All Blacks is your everyday wear. You do have a very structured daily schedule. Uh, so especially as a freshman, you have sort of the most oversight and then many opportunities to advance in leadership positions. So um, when you come in as a freshman, you sort of are all about following and, and learning to take instruction from your upperclassmen. And as, as you progress through, you get to then take that opportunity um, to become one of those leaders and to train the underclassmen as they come in. Campus life and athletics. So this makes us a little bit um, on, the, on the more traditional scale. Um, this will balance out. We do have division three athletics for men's and women's teams. We have cross country, track and field, sailing, crew, soccer, and lacrosse um, for men's teams, football and baseball, and then for women's softball and volleyball. We have a very active student government association. Um, they do all sorts of events and pop up things on campus, whether it be um, food trucks or comedians and concerts. Um, we have academic military clubs, um, sports intramurals, seventh company is the band and the honor guard. Um, so if you had any interest in learning um, about rifle movements and drill team, those would be something to take a look into. So what type of student applies? Um, the average weighted GPA is about a 3.1, average SAT is between a 1050 to an 1100, average ACT 22 or 23. Uh, we're really looking at what type of classes students have taken, um, looking for strength in math and science, energy systems, engineering, and emergency management are the most competitive, and we are now on the Common App, um, which we're super excited about. Um, you can apply online on our website or on the Common App. We have no preferences to which one you choose. Um, so some ways to find out some more information. We do have general information sessions Tuesday afternoons and Thursday evenings. We offer cadet chats. So if you really wanna hear what campus life is like, um, you can do personal interviews with the admissions office. And then we also offer virtual and in-person tours. And this is how to connect with us. So if you have any questions, you can um, grab a screenshot of this, um, reach out to us, follow us on any of the social media. It really gives you an insight as to what cadet life is really like. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions, definitely don't hesitate to put those into the Q&A down below. Up next, we have Stony Brook University. Hi guys, sorry, I was just sharing my screen with you. So as I get the presentation started, uh, thank you for attending tonight. My name is Rachel and I am one of the admissions counselors here at Stony Brook. So if you're not familiar with where we are located, we are in Long Island, New York. So we're about 60 miles west of New York City. And then another 60 miles east of us is Montauk, which is the most Eastern end of Long Island. Um, obviously being on an island, we're surrounded by water, which is really beautiful. And where Stony Brook is, we're definitely more of a suburban area. So we're being smack in the middle. It's kind of the best of both worlds. You're not like stuck in the middle of nowhere, um, but you have, you know, all your necessities right around. So we have shopping malls very close by within 10 minutes or so or less, grocery stores, Target, Whole Foods, everything that you need very close by, which makes it very convenient. We're also close to two uh, historic villages, Port Jefferson, as well as Old Stony Brook Village. So those are nice little quaint areas that have some mom and pop eateries, cafes, and nice places to just go and study and get a change of scenery. So the picture you see here is our entire campus. We are decently large on just over 1,000 acres. And everything is very centralized at Stony Brook, which is really nice. So getting around campus is very easy, even though it is a larger campus. Pretty much everything is within what we call, or it's actually named Circle Road. So all of the academic buildings are in the center that's surrounded by all of our residential halls. And then on the outskirts, you can see we have our recreational facilities as well as our research development park. We also have our hospital campus. Uh, we have a tertiary teaching hospital. 
right next door to us. That's our East Campus. Uh, so for students interested in any pre-med or health sciences, you can study right there, which is really nice. And then we also have another campus in Southampton, which is mostly dedicated to our School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, as well as our health technology management programs. So we are a decently large size institution with just over 18,000 undergraduate students. And we are part of the SUNY system, so the State Universities of New York. Stony Brook is known as one of the flagship institutions of the SUNY system, and we are one of 64 total campuses. We have more than 200 academic programs at Stony Brook, so there are a lot of different areas that you can study in. The majority of our students will at least major or minor. A good majority will double major and minor, so there's a lot of combinations that you can come up with to really hone into your specific interests. So all of our programs, this includes majors and minors, fall into these colleges and schools you see listed here. So we have our College of Arts and Sciences, which obviously has our art programs and our science programs. Um, inclusive of art history, studio art, chemistry, biology, and then of course things like social sciences, so psychology, sociology, and many others. It's our largest college. Our College of Engineering and Applied Sciences has all of our engineering programs from biomedical engineering to electrical, mechanical, and then we also have our computer science programs and our computer information systems programs within that amongst others. Our College of Business has our one major, which is our business management program. And there's a lot of concentrations you can focus on, including accounting, marketing, finance. Our School of Journalism is exclusive to us out of the SUNY system. We are the only school that offers the School of Journalism or a journalism program in the SUNY system. So we're very proud of that. Being so close to New York City definitely helps with these students find uh, opportunities to then go on not only to intern, but most of them find careers that way as well. And then our School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, again, we have a campus dedicated to that in Southampton, and that includes our marine science program, marine vertebrae program, as well as sustainability studies and atmospheric sciences. So at Stony Brook, we have a lot of fun traditions that we offer uh, to students because obviously you come to college to have a little bit of fun too outside of the classroom. Uh, so this is just a few pictured here. Our Roth Pond Regatta is the one I definitely want to mention. It's our most deeply seated tradition and definitely one of my favorites. Um, so students are given duct tape, cardboard and paint and they have to create these boats that you see pictured here and get them across our Roth Pond in our Roth Quad, which is located on campus. Really fun day. Everyone comes out from administration to faculty to students. Uh, and we've been doing that for about 40 years. We have our Stony Brook concerts in the fall, which is to welcome you guys to campus as new students. Homecoming, obviously, with tailgating. Uh, we have 18 Division I athletic teams, and we are part of the NCAA East, American East Conference. Uh, so those are always fun to attend. And then our Earth Stock event celebrates just being an environmentally friendly campus. So a lot of food vendors come out, and there's games and different events throughout the day. As far as our application procedure goes, First year or freshman applications are due by February 1st. April 1st is our decision notification um, deadline where decisions will go out. And then May 1st is the national deposit deadline. So at Stony Brook, you would be a sea wolf. And this is Wolfie pictured here. Actually, he is our mascot. So you'll see him around campus if you ever decide to apply and attend. Our application process, you apply online. We accept the coalition common and SUNY applications. You would have to submit official transcripts from high school, test scores, as well as supplements, which we require one letter of recommendation. And then this is our class profile. So I'll leave that up there. If you did want to take a snapshot of that, as I see, I am running out of time. And then our total cost for out-of-state residents is currently just over or just under 44,000. Uh, this does include everything, tuition fees, room and board, but most of our students do receive financial aid. And then we also have merit-based aid available as well. So this is my contact information. We also have um, a chat with a current Seawolf where you can talk to a current student, which is really, really helpful. And then we have our general information there if you wanted to contact us, as well as we're on social media at Stony Brook U. So thank you all tonight. Thank you so much for that presentation. Up next, we have Savannah College of Art and Design. Hey. My name is Leah Bear, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admission here at SCAD. And today I want to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do here 
at Smeda College of Art and Design at the University for Creative Careers. So to give you a quick history lesson, SCAD was actually founded in 1978 and for more than going to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world with campus locations in Atlanta, Georgia, a beautiful study abroad location in the south of France and the coast, our home base in Savannah, Georgia, and then of course, a full e-learning platform as well. Now, our university is really diverse. We have about 15,000 students that come to us from all 50 states and over 100 different countries. And we offer more programs of study and specialization than any other art and design university in the US. That means we have over 100 degree programs for you to choose from. That's over 40 majors and 75 minors. But no matter what program you end up here with SCAD, the one thing rings true throughout them all, and that is career preparation. And that's evident by our university's stellar alumni employment rate of 99%. That means 99% of the spring 2019 alumni were either employed, seeking further education, or both within 10 months of graduation. And 91% of these were doing so in a creative field. And that's just a testament to our talented and ambitious students because SCAD, alumni, and the work are everywhere. Take, for instance, Christopher John Rogers. Now, following his graduation from SCAD, Christopher John Rogers launched his own line with his fellow bees. You may have even seen some of his fantastical garments on icons like Michelle Obama, Lizzo, and even Lady Gaga. Now, here at SCAD, we do champion a culture of small class settings and individualized attention for our students. Our foundations and general courses will cap at 30, and then any of your major specific courses will all cap at 20 students per class. And whether it's in the boardroom or the classroom, our professors are here to help serve you and help connect you with the valuable networks that they've created throughout their own careers. So whether you envision yourself on the red carpet, the runway, or even your very own cover of Forbes, there's truly a place for every student here at SCAD. Now, as a student, you'll have some opportunities to collaborate with global companies and brands through SCAD Pro. This is our in-house design studio where our students dream up design solutions for global brands. Recently, students reimagined Disney resorts. They pitched the future to Google and a group even got to share a driverless car through Volvo. Now, these SCAD programs have actually launched over 500 company collaborations with over 300 top brands. And out of these, we've had over 200 direct job and internship offers offered to our students. Proving that real world experience is gonna help you get that much closer to your dream job. So with that being said, SCAD offers everything to suit your interest in or out of the classroom. At our Atlanta and our Savannah locations, there's over 100 student clubs from intramural, community, academic, and special interest. We also have a competitive intercollegiate athletic program, varsity sports, and we do have intramural as well. And when you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of our campus locations. So you can start your studies in SCAD Atlanta, a thriving film and business hub, venture to the peaceful scenic hills of Southern France and SCAD Lacoste, and then circle back around to Savannah, Georgia, to the historic squares and cobblestone streets. And of course, if your journey takes you elsewhere, you can always study through our e-learning program. Now, for those of you who are in high school, you can begin, begin your high school journey with SCAD through our SCAD Pre-College Now programs. These are programs online or at a university location. So if you're a rising sophomore, junior, or senior, you can actually start to develop your talents at a SCAD Summer Seminars program. This is a one-week program in Atlanta, online, or in Savannah. And for my rising high school seniors out there, you can even earn college credit through SCAD Rising Star, a summer program online or at a university location where you're gonna be enrolled in two university level courses of your choice. And then of course, we have for any of my eligible high school students 16 years or older, you can earn college credit through SCAD now. This is our joint enrollment course. And through these avenues, you'll be on the fast track to college that much sooner. So here's where my juniors and seniors need to listen up. Your first step is to start the application process with us, either through our admissions website, scad.edu, or through the Common App. This is going to take 10 minutes of biographical information, and from there, you're going to be connected to your personal admissions advisor, who will help you complete your checklist. 
submitting things like test scores and transcripts. Pro tip, we are test optional through fall 2022. In the meantime, we encourage you to visit and connect with us. You can check out our daily tours and open house options at scad.edu forward slash visit. And in the meantime, you can always stay connected to us on social media. We have an amazing YouTube channel and an Instagram for pretty much every one of our majors and sports teams. So for those of you who are wanting to take the next steps with me today, go ahead and grab your camera app, open it, and you can scan that and fill out a two minute form to help me stay connected with you. And I really appreciate you guys today. Again, my name is Leah Bear. This is my contact information, and I hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you so much for that presentation. As a final reminder to our participants, if you do have questions, definitely don't hesitate to put those into the Q&A down below. Up next, we have Sterling College. Hi all, my name is Moxie. I use they them pronouns and I'm the Dean of Admission at Sterling College. I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. And I hope you all have gotten to enjoy the nice spring weather. We're having, we finally come into um, spring in Vermont. Um, we're, in, we're located in Northern Vermont, um, for those of you who are, um, don't know our location. So um, Sterling College is um, a small and unique um, college that is focused on um, ecological thinking and action. What does that mean? It means how, um, what is our relationship with the natural world? How do we function within it? And how do we look at our complex systems um, within the natural world? We believe in learning and community. Um, our campus is made up of 125 students um, between, actually between two campuses, one here and one in Kentucky, um, with an average of about 70 students living on campus um, in our, on our rural campus in, in, um, in Vermont. During COVID um, this year and, and potentially into next year, um, although we're hoping the regulations continue to change as people are being vaccinated, um, uh, we moved our model into kind of living and learning pods. Um, one of the values and um, beauties of being a small school and having multiple housing facilities is that our, our students were able to um, live and learn um, with the same group of people so that they could have individuals who they could remain unmasked um, and be in pod with. Um, this allowed for dynamic relationships, um, relationships to grow with new people who um, folks may not have um, interacted with as intensely as they um, were in space with them both in the classroom and outside. At Sterling, we definitely believe that food is love. I, I loved hearing that there are other schools who also see that value in food. Um, the Sterling Kitchen is voted the number one dining hall in the country, um, in part um, because we believe uh, food should have food in it. Um, we grow about 40% of the food that we eat on campus, um, right here on campus, which are grown, harvested, produced, and often cooked by students themselves. So you'll be able to see, um, we talk about kind of food and food systems, not just from, um, seed um, you know, on to production, but really from soil to soil. Um, what is the conditions of the land? How do we, um, how do we honor its um, heritage? How do we learn from it? And then all the way through into the production of the food that we eat. And we, um, we believe in, in hands-on, in bold um, uh, design and, and doing work, uh, not for the sake of necessarily of learning, um, but doing things that are practical um, that have real world application and that um, you can work on in and out of your time at Sterling. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our majors. There's only four of them, so it goes pretty quickly. Um, we have our sustainable agriculture and food systems. Um, our campus is, um, is made up um, and sandwiched by two parts of our farm. We have an active livestock farm um, side of our farm and we also have an active um, vegetable um, uh, plot. Um, we also have a natural dyes garden, um, which produces beautiful flowers, not only for um, the pleasure of flowers, but um, that um, feed that uh, we use in our dye program in our environmental humanities program. And um, we get to see kind of the entire scope of practice um, for, for our students. Um, one of the beautiful things in that hands-on and experimental and experiential learning is uh, you will uh, be at the forefront right from the beginning. Um, so day one, uh, you were actively working on the farm. If you're part of the draft animal program, um, by your second class, you were often um, driving our draft team alongside faculty or seasoned students. 
So environmental humanities, this is the intersection between um, the human and the natural world. So we focus on cultivation of skills around storytelling, um, uh, art and production, um, song, cultural studies, really looking at that connection about where humans kind of sit um, in the scope of the natural world. And I'd like to point out kind of two of our kind of key, key uh, parts of that is our word work, our state of the art art woodworking facility um, and our fiber arts program, which not only uses the dyes from our dye garden, but we were able to use uh, natural fibers um, from our uh, sheep that we have on site. We have an ecology program. So in our ecology program, you'll spend no less than 150 days in the field, um, collecting samples, working with the river, working with other partnerships that are doing kind of environmental um, focused work. Um, and we do see our entire campus as, as a learning lab. So we have, um, we have different uh, kind of microbiomes uh, around uh, our campus, including a cedar swamp. We're right at the foothills of the Green Mountains and we're right next to the White, Nas White Mountain National um, Forest. And finally, outdoor education, um, which is not only the um, intersection between educational um, praxis and practice, so how to become an educator, um, but how to bring in meaningful movement and recreation. So with, through this degree, you'll learn things like um, rope climbing, or, or rock climbing skills, um, ice climbing, um, hiking, be part of Nordic skiing, um, and all kind of in the framework of team development, leadership, um, and facilitation. One of the programs that I'd like to uh, point out is that we have our global field studies program. So every student, Sterling student, has the opportunity to, um, to take a meaningful trip during their college career, and um, that costs no more um, money for other than your standard tuition. And the other piece is the work program. So each student is um, hired by the campus to do meaningful work on campus, build your resume, and you're paid right around $22 an hour that goes directly to your tuition um, to be offering those um, meaningful um, work to the school. So I'll, I know that I'm close to my time and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and move to wrap up. What I always will say to folks through their application process, the decision to where you go to college should be the hard part. Um, please feel free to be in touch with us at any point um, if you'd like to talk about an application here at Sterling. So thanks so much. Thank you for that presentation. Our final institution for this session is the University of Connecticut. All right, thank you so much. Let me just go ahead and get my screen shared. So a little bit about UConn. We were originally founded in 1881 as an agriculture school. Now over 130 years later, you can still see those agriculture roots on campus, but we've grown to be so much more than that. Our main campus is Stores, and it's in the upper northeast quadrant of Connecticut, about 90 minutes from Boston, two and a half hours from New York City. Most of our out-of-state students do go to the Stores campus, and there's about 19,000 students on our Stores campus, but we do have several other campuses throughout the state of Connecticut, and we have 24,000 students in our entire UConn system. When it comes to academics, we offer over 115 majors and over 320 minors across 10 different schools and colleges, which can sound like a lot, and no worries about that. About a quarter of our incoming first year students are undecided, so they'll be admitted into our ACES, or Academic Center for Exploratory Students program, where they meet with various advisors who help them figure out what they want to study. When it comes to some of the more fun things that we have to offer on campus, we are pretty well known for our men's and women's basketball teams. We have 24 division one athletic teams with 23 national championships across the board and all students do get free tickets to all athletic games, which is pretty cool. We also offer over 700 student clubs and organizations that can range from Greek life to pre-professional societies to your more fun clubs like the math club, the moon watching club, the cannoli club. We literally have it all. We also have five cultural centers on campus that really show our dedication to diversity and inclusion on campus. And then just a quick note about housing. All first year students are required to live on campus. Housing is guaranteed for all four years and most of our students stay on campus until about their junior year. Now switching gears to talk a little bit more about the application. We do not have, um, a, we do not have early decision or early action, but we do have a priority deadline of, of December 1st. And that December 1st priority deadline is for 
merit scholarship and honors program consideration. There's no separate application for the honors program or for merit scholarships. Every student will be automatically considered. And then that December 1st deadline is also for our special programs in law, medicine, dental medicine, and education. They are an assurance program, meaning that if you know you definitely want to go to med school and you're accepted into our special program in medicine, you are assured that you have a spot in UConn School of Medicine after your time as an undergrad. And then our regular on-time stores application deadline is January 15th. So as long as you submit all of your materials by then, you'll hear back from us on March 1st. And then if you're interested in applying to one of our regional campuses, the deadline to apply is May 1st. So when you're ready to actually submit your application, you can find us on the Common App and the Coalition App. We don't have a preference. We do require official transcript and a personal essay. We don't care what topic the personal essay is about. I know that the Common App has seven different prompts and we would love to hear about any one of them. We really just wanna hear about what makes you, you. When it comes to letters of recommendation, we do strongly encourage you to submit two, though they are optional. And then we are test optional as well for the next two years. And when we say test optional, really, we really do mean test optional. We like to say that if your SAT, ACT scores are an accurate reflection of what you're capable of academically, then maybe it'd be a good idea to submit those scores. But if, if you know that you are capable of so much more than what your scores reflect, then maybe don't submit those scores. And that's totally okay you will not be at a disadvantage because we review applications in a holistic way. So not only are we looking at your GPA and what classes you took, but we're also looking at your involvement outside of the classroom, any extracurricular activities, any leadership opportunities. So if you choose not to submit those SAT, ACT scores, it's okay because we have plenty of other material to evaluate, evaluate your application off of. And then we also require an application fee of $80. So here is some information about how to stay connected with us virtually. We are currently offering in-person tours to admitted students only. We're hoping to have prospective students on campus sometime this summer. Um, but in the meantime, you can find us on our virtual experiences page where you can take a virtual tour of campus. You can chat one-on-one -on -one with admissions representatives and you can also chat one-on-one -on -one with current UConn students. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much panelists for giving us a lot of great information about your respective institutions. I'm gonna invite them to come back for you guys to answer a quick question to give you insight to some of their favorite things. So, well, favorite things on their campus rather. So the question we're gonna be answering is what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? And we'll go in presentation order. So we'll start with Lane University. Absolutely, I think um, our favorite event as faculty, students and staff is our Founders Day. Uh, every year we celebrate it in a different way. A few years back, we had a Game of Thrones uh, theme. We had the ice sculptures. Our president brought a big fur coat and it's like 90 degrees, but he still managed to make it work and everything. So every year it's new. Every year the students don't know what's going to happen. So it's a surprise. So definitely keep an eye out and you're always going to get a little hint via Instagram as well. Massachusetts Maritime. So I think my students would have a different answer, but my favorite event on campus is probably our orientation graduation. So all of our freshmen go through a two week orientation that I personally describe as a, a mini boot camp. Um, and so I think the coolest thing on our campus is watching the transition that happens in those students in that two week period when they come in and they don't know how to march and they don't know how, how to wear their uniform. Um, and at the end of two weeks, all of those students carry themselves very differently than that first day that they arrived on campus. So that's my favorite. Stony Brook. I kind of said Roth Pond during my presentation, which is definitely one of my favorites, but I think earth stock for sure. Um, one of my like side passions is I work for a farmer's market. So it definitely celebrates something that I enjoy outside of my nine to five job, um, bringing in all the vendors and things like that. It's just a fun day. 
Um, and there's food involved too. So I know a few of you mentioned you're definitely foodies. I can definitely relate to that as well. Um, it, and it's just, it's a really nice day and they do a really cool rubber ducky race down. There's a uh, waterfall in the middle of campus. So that's always just fun to watch as well. SCAD? Yeah, so here at SCAD, we're really fortunate to have a number of signature events that we host throughout the year, like our fashion show or our animation fest. But my favorite is definitely waiting for the reveal of who's going to be at our film festival that we host every fall. So it's like those big wait ups for a couple of weeks out to see who's going to be there, actors, producers, industry professionals. And last year, we actually had John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. And as someone who's a big U.S. office fan, um, and Mary Poppins at the end, that was a really fun thing for me to see that they were coming. and I got to go and actually watch some of the screenings that they put on for us. Sterling College. Um, yeah, so our my favorite event is our winter expedition. Any um, freshman or junior um, has an opportunity to do a five day winter backpacking trek um, from on the long trail five days away from campus. We, they hike back to campus. Um, faculty um, and staff will join them, but they'll hike away from the group. So the group really has to kind of make their way um, through the wind, the water, the snow. Um, and they are always met um, with pots and pans banging across to the um, quad with a campfire, cocoa, and fresh made donuts. It's, a, it's quite, the, um, quite the event here in Craftsbury. And University of Connecticut. I'd say my favorite event is one of our spring weekend events called Ooze Ball. It is volleyball played in the mud. It is tournament style and tons of students come out to just throw a ball around in the mud. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can give us. And as I mentioned earlier on, this session was recorded and will be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great evening.